Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Fuller, Mary and son. Uh, on behalf of my whole family, please know how grateful we are that you're here with us tonight. Uh, this is a really special evening for us, and, and we really appreciate it. It's wonderful to see so many familiar faces and so many new ones. So thank you so much for being with us. I also uh, like to wish everyone a happy new year, and let's uh, please show our, uh, express our gratitude to the Sandpipers who provide the music as we have today. And it is now my honor to introduce this evening's Master of Ceremonies, the Honorable Mary Elizabeth Heffernan, First Justice of the New District Court.
remain standing so we may have the pleasure of allegiance found by Grace Ryan, Katie Ryan, and Katie Osborne. God, we praise you for your glory and thank you for your goodness. Look upon, Mary, with your continuing love and support and bless her as she faithfully takes on, once again, the responsibilities and challenges of the Office of the Middlesex District Attorney. Rekindle the gifts of your Holy Spirit as you bless Marion with renewed courage and strength, wisdom and knowledge. Reassure her with hope in you and a continued awareness of our presence in the world. May your loving spirit grace Marion with the talents and skills she will need for the good of all those whom she will serve in the many cities and towns of this county one of the most populated in the United States and the largest in New England. Bless Marion and her staff. May they believe in the many angels they have to guide them in their work. May their spouses, family members, relatives and friends, and all those who pray for them be blessed and protected wherever life's journey takes them. Marion, May you know God's blessings, just as your forebears received God's blessings. And in the words of blessing that we find in chapter 6 of the book of Numbers, I pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace all the days of your life. Thank you very much, Father. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Mayor Ruth Ann Fuller. Um, I, again, it was last year, it was just 
uh, a wonderful year I was asked to swear in, I guess the new district court judge swears in the mayor, and it was a wonderful, wonderful occasion <coughs> in the city of Newton. She has been the mayor for over a year, a year now. She uh, is a wonderful leader, and uh, she is a very, very hard and passionate worker with the DA's office uh, in the prevention efforts. She has been a partner to the DA's office and to District Attorney Rowling on many of these uh, initiatives, uh, in addition with the City Council and the State Legislatures. May I Good evening. And what a pleasure it is to welcome all of you here to the City of Newton. And what a special evening it is. Yes, it is so special because we're here to celebrate the swearing in of our Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan. And I would add all of the assistant district attorneys. People who care deeply and work so hard to ensure equal justice under the law. It is also special to come together, yes, here in Newton, to celebrate, I think it is the best of democracy. I think you, we are seeing here tonight the three branches of government come together judicial, the legislative, the executive, to support what we care so deeply about, the Constitution of the United States and the principles of the rule of law and justice for all. Welcome to all of you here too. Thank you. It is really a 
great, great honor and pleasure to be here at Luka City Hall as one of your representatives <coughs> this evening for the administration of the oath of office to Mary Ryan, re-elected for the second term as district attorney of Middlesex County, representing the largest county with 54 cities and towns, comprising over one quarter of the population of Massachusetts. The role of the district attorney is extremely important in every way imaginable. DA Ryan has to decide whether to prosecute a case, she must investigate the evidence, decide if a plan a plea bargain will be offered, conduct trials, and litigate appeals. Every decision in the process counts. District Attorney Ryan is an open-minded, progressive leader, a summa cum laude graduate of Emmanuel College and a cum laude graduate of Boston College Law School. She was first appointed as Middlesex DA by Governor Jamal Patrick and won her first election for DA in 2014. She is a career prosecutor with significant courtroom experience, having prosecuted many of Middlesex County's most complex and challenging cases. She is a talented appellate attorney and has briefed and argued more than 40 cases in the Middlesex Appeals Court and Supreme Judicial Court. As district attorney, she is responsible for the prosecution of approximately 40,000 cases a year. From her professional as well as personal experience, DA Ryan has learned that as important it is, as important as prosecution is, prevention is equally as important. And she and it leads to better outcomes. She is a recognized expert on developing and creating innovative solutions that are defined by not simply getting involved after a criminal act has occurred, but instead taking meaningful steps to stop crime before it happens. She was the only one of 11 DAs in Massachusetts, and the only woman at the time, not to sign on to a 2015 letter to the Boston Globe editor defending mandatory minimum sentences. She was one of the very few DAs in Massachusetts to highlight her support of the legislature's 2018 important criminal justice reform bill, which brought sweeping changes to a system that hadn't moved forward in years, especially for youth emerging, for youth for emerging adults and justice-involved women, many of whom are mothers. These are also areas that I have been championing for years. In fact, we were both invited to Germany in 2018 by the Columbia University Justice Lab to do their innovative approaches to youth and emerging adults involved in the, in the justice system. What we learned will it influence Massachusetts' approach as we are beginning an exploration of the specific concerns of emerging adults aged 18 to 24, knowing that we need to do better. DA Ryan has moved uh, to end the use of cash bail for low-level crimes and has developed valuable court diversion programs that steer less serious cases out of the criminal justice system, a movement toward a restorative justice approach. DA Ryan has been a leader in domestic violence prevention and prosecution for over three decades and has conducted trainings across the country, across the county, for prosecutors, law enforcement officers, and service providers on recognizing the signs of domestic violence. She joined the task force at the State House in our request to draft a bill to end child marriage in the Commonwealth. Many of these young women also experience domestic violence. The DA Ryan, as a DA, she has created a conviction integrity unit to review closed cases where there has been a claim of a 
potential long-haul conviction. She regularly lectures and leads workshops on workplace safety, the dangers of prescription drug abuse, teen dating violence, and anti-bullying, and distracted driving. She has been acknowledged for her early leadership on substance abuse, on substance abuse disorders. In partnership with me, one of her very first, first programs was held right here at the New Wellesley Hospital. She has also developed initiatives aimed at protecting our seniors and keeping children safe, including reminding parents to remove children and pets from cars in the hot summer months when we're running at Maryland. Mary Ryan served unsentingly on the child mandated reporter working group that I created with Senator Lovely as co-chairs of the Joint Commission on Children, Families, and Persons with Disabilities. To clarify, enhance, the purpose was to clarify, is to clarify, enhance, and strengthen the present protections against child abuse. This also resulted in a filing of a bill and I'm writing bill this session, building on the working group recommendations. District Attorney Ryan has received a number of awards, peer recognition for her trial skills, and community involvement, including Middlesex County uh, Fire Association Lifetime Achievement Award and Boston College Law School David Nelson Public Service Award. District Attorney Ryan has significant teaching experience as an adjunct professor in both graduate and undergraduate levels. She is currently on the facility, on the faculty of the South College of Newton, where she teaches courses in constitutional law and the American legal system. She has previously taught at Emmanuel College, Wentworth Institute, and at Harvard Law School's trial advocacy workshop. She is committed through her work her volunteer work with the Women's Bar Foundation to mentoring for mentoring women, lawyers, and law students as they begin their legal careers. She has also served on the faculty of numerous professional and community boards focused on training practicing lawyers, including the National Association of District Attorneys, the Massachusetts Bar Association, the Massachusetts Service Association and Massachusetts Continuing Legal Education. On a personal note, I would like to acknowledge DA Ryan's integrity, her proactive approach, her commitment to solving problems pertaining to criminal justice, and her willingness to be consulted and serve on task forces and commissions that explore these complex issues. She is actively invested and interested in her work. She is always available and act as immediately responsive when a crime or a catastrophic situation occurs. To quote Senator Brownsburger, co-chair of the Joint Committee on Judiciary, she has been a constructive voice that lifts people up instead of locking them up. I consider her a friend and a close collaborator. I am so happy to have now the opportunity to continue to work with her on many issues that we as legislators representing Middlesex County work on your behalf. I know that I am joined by the Middlesex delegation to congratulate uh, Mary and Ryan. We all consider her a partner in the work that we are doing for the county and the commonwealth. We appreciate her willingness to learn and tackle new issues, her upbeat approach, her friendship, and her smile. Uh, so congratulations uh, also to the assistant district attorneys who will be sworn in uh, this evening. It's a time to celebrate with friends and family. So thank you and happy 2019 to all.
solemnly swear. To solemnly swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution thereof. And will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Marion T. Ryan. I, Marion T. Ryan. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As district attorney for Middlesex County. As district attorney for Middlesex County. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of the Constitution. Of the Constitution. And laws of this Commonwealth. And the laws of this Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, Marion T. Ryan. I, Marion T. Ryan. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Pursuing careers as teachers, 
And I cannot truly express how much I know this has impacted their life and how grateful I am. Much of the success that we have achieved over the past four years has come because we have so firmly adhered to the belief which I think drives our work and which was instilled in me when I began in this office by then District Attorney Brody over 30 years ago. And those include the beliefs that we are all better served when we work towards a criminal justice system that is fair and is perceived to be fair. That we must invest as much in rehabilitation as we do in punishment. And that we must be proactive rather than reactive to crime. Since 2013, when I became district attorney, I had the incredible opportunity to partner with many of the legislators who are here, legislators who are here particularly those on the stage. I've been able to be part of the full legislative cycle. And I'm happy particularly to have worked on one special area of the new criminal justice bill, which I was happy to join Senator Green and Senator Eldridge in their leadership on this work but particularly with Senator Eldridge to partner around the cause of restorative justice. Restorative justice is a process that seeks to truly repair the harm caused by crime. It emphasizes accountability, the making of amends, and the meetings frequently between offenders and those who get impacted by the crime, whether the actual victim or members of the community. I believe in restorative justice because it does something that you don't always see in the process. It affects transformation. And that the real basis of so much of our work is a belief that people are capable of change. And because of the commitment of the police chiefs, many of whom I'm happy to have with us this evening, we have enjoyed in Middlesex County the benefits of restorative justice through the leadership of the police chiefs as well as our strong relationship with restorative justice programs. Citizens here have enjoyed that opportunity to engage in restorative justice for almost six years. By passing the legislation to make that available across the Commonwealth took great persistence on the part of Senator Eldridge. There were many, many attempts when we almost got it done. And ultimately, this summer, the language that we had written regarding restorative justice was included in that criminal justice bill. And since August of 2018, everyone across the Commonwealth has the opportunity to participate in what we know is an effective way of addressing crime, and that is restorative justice. As you heard, I've been a prosecutor for my whole career. And I understand well the sacredness of the bond that we form with victims and with their families. Whether it is reaching in accountability, getting information, or taking them to a place where they at least know what has happened, perhaps with loved ones. Our victim witness advocates were an integral part of our staff do an amazing job in helping to build those connections. This coming Monday, January 7th, will mark 50 years since a then 23-year-old graduate student was murdered in her bed in her small apartment just outside of Harvard Square. It ended her life, and it ended what was about to be a very promising career as an anthropologist. That was just the beginning of the terrible uncertainty and lack of information for her family. For many, many years, her family and friends were left without answers of who had killed her. And into that vacuum, as it happens, rumors and theories were born about what might have happened, who might have been responsible. And there were many possible suspects. Friends of James, faculty members, others, <coughs> who were very publicly discussed as having been the perpetrator of that human crime. 
Finally, just about six weeks ago, in November of 2018, due to the dedicated work of the State Police Crime Lab, the prosecutors and the State Police assigned to my office, we were able to reach out to Jay's younger brother and give him that answer. Identifying her killer as a now deceased individual who had previously been identified and convicted of having committed several similar ways in, in resulting in murder of several young women who were strangers to him, as was Jane. For that brother, who had spent the last 50 years not knowing what had happened to his sister. And for those men who for 50 years have lived under a cloud of suspicion as possible perpetrators. Our ability to solve what is today our oldest uncharged case that we were able to bring to resolution is priceless. Our work with families has particularly been involved with the opioids, the impact of the opioid crisis. Nowhere has there been a change in the way our first responders have had to do their jobs in a greater way than in responding to that crisis. Our police and our fire chiefs, many of whom are with us today, have been statewide leaders here in Middlesex County. Their willingness to try new ways of thinking, to implement new practices, has led to such a difference in the way we think about this issue, the programs we're able to offer, and the results we have seen. We need, in looking at the secondary areas in the to think about numbers, to measure how we do it. But our work in Middlesex County, and this is shared by all of our first responders, our work is focused on knowing that for every number we count, every percentage point that we see change, behind that is someone's child, someone's brother or sister, or increasingly someone's mom or dad. When we look back on what we accomplished here in Middlesex County in 2018, largely because of those partnerships in our work, we see that we have once again reduced our fatal overdose rate from opioids in Middlesex County by 12.6%. At a significantly higher than any change that's occurred either statewide or across the country. When coupled with the 11.5 percent decrease that we saw in 2017, that means that in that partnership, and working with our legislators and our first responders, we have reduced fatalities from opioid overdoses by 24 and a half percent here in Middlesex. Does not take into account 
the terror it inflicts, the intimidation that it causes, the danger that it results from these incidents. This legislation, which we filed last session or refiled, would allow us to be able to appropriately address those issues. We know that in Middlesex County, in addition to the folks who live and work here, we are home to 25 colleges and universities. As a woman, as the mother of a daughter, I know that sexual violence on college campuses disproportionately impacts women. We have partnerships in place with our colleges and universities. We'll be moving forward in that work with our goal being to end that culture of silence and denial that has often existed on our college campuses. We will continue to work with our legislative partners and our chiefs of police to make further progress on criminal justice reforms. No one is well served when individuals enter a cycle of incarceration. I am proud to have been a small part of that process. I look forward to working as we go forward on so many of the innovations that we've developed here in Middlesex County, working towards our reentry programs and improvements in ways that we can both have people recover from incarceration and avoid incarceration where that's appropriate. A Middlesex County resident, Henry David Thoreau, wrote that to be able to do work that affects well the days of others is a great gift. At the Middlesex District Attorney's Office, every single day, we do work that affects well the days of others. I fully understand what a privilege that is, and I'm truly grateful to all of you for the gift of being able to do that work and for being with us tonight. Thank you so much.
which has highlighted and celebrated the important and difficult work of the district attorney's office. We are also grateful that you are here with us tonight and you would like to invite you to join us in my refreshments.